Good morning, comic and pop culture sirs. Today I thought I'd give you 20 things that we buyers can utilize to give us the best comic book etiquette around. Do be some good sirs and consider subscribing, liking, and commenting on this video. Let's start the list off with number one. Ask before inspecting the interior pages of a comic book. Personally, I have a $20 cutoff. Under $20, I typically am not asking a shopkeeper to thumb through each of the pages of the book to inspect it, but I certainly will do it for the higher priced items. Sitting there and nitpicking through a pile of 100 books all around the $5 value might not be the best look. Next up, don't crowd a space. Sometimes for dollar bin specials, your natural instinct will be to hulk over one specific box or maybe even a few boxes. You have to be respectful to the others around and let them in for a spot. One time I was diving for dollar bin books there was a pretty big guy there that I don't think showered within a month, and I don't think he believed in deodorant. He certainly did have a monopoly over the books because no one wanted to be near him. Might have been a brilliant move, but it is quite rude and it does not fall under comic etiquette. Next up, it's important to remember that it is okay and you're right to haggle. Some shops don't allow it, and that is okay, especially if they're already decently priced. If you've got a large amount of books that you've spent the day picking through, I think it's acceptable to ask for a 5 or a 10% drop off the price. Don't be embarrassed, it's more than acceptable. Next up, it's important to remember that it is okay to walk away. If a deal or a collection falls through, it's all right. If something changes that you don't like about the deal that was not prior discussed, it's okay to turn around. Thank them for their time and move on. I can't tell you how many deals that I've been a part of that have fallen through after seemingly been completed. They changed their mind and that is their right to do so and you need to move on. Number five is gonna be ask to see the wall books. They may be quite valuable. You don't wanna be responsible for a dropped book or God forbid, an entire dropped wall. I have seen it happen. In fact, just a few months ago on my very own antique shop camera, I actually saw someone took off a comic from my J channel wall, knocking over a couple books with it. Next up, it's important to not hold up the line. If you are going to have a question for every little thing, I would recommend doing it once you see that it's just you and the clerk. Try to look for that moment when no one else is there. No one likes a guy asking questions about hentai comics when you just have one item to buy. Next up, it's important to remember that comic shops are not libraries. Don't sit there and just simply read the brand new books. Do intend to actually purchase them. Many of us are able to skim through a comic book pretty fast and are able to commit it to memory and get the gist of what's going on. Shop owners are not a fan of this and rightly so. Next up, sirs, it's important to wash your hands before and after, but if you're a germaphobe like me, you've always got hand sanitizer present. When you're thumbing through the comics and the dollar bins, you are gonna see that there's a lot of hand oil that touches that stuff pretty regularly. Do your part by not contributing any further to any grease and grime to the comics. And a side note, be gentle with the bins as well. Next up is don't ask for an outrageous discount. It comes across as rude and disrespectful if you're offering 70% or lower of the price tag. Recently, someone messaged me on eBay about an item and they actually offered 40% of my listing price, which was already lower than recent sales. I'm honestly surprised I even answered it. Don't talk smack about a shop. Bad gossip can really hurt a comic shop. If you have constructive criticism, talk privately with the shop manager or clerk, or perhaps even write a letter. It can really hurt their reputation and can actually even be the cherry on top that forces them to close their doors. Next up is sort of similar, and it's don't be negative for clout. For the few of you that do have a TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, or some other social media presence, I do not recommend or encourage name dropping and slandering. It comes across as a very clickbaity way of feeding on YouTube's negative side for views and is not a good way to be starting a brand. The amount of people hurt in your wake will rack up too. Do not be afraid to point out wrong pricing. If you see a book that's listed at $100, but you look up the sales data and you see that it hasn't even gone above 60, it's okay to show it to the clerk or the manager just to see if they can do a price match. And if they say no, it is important that you asked. Next up, bring cash. 
This one's a little bit more of a tip than it is etiquette. Oftentimes, the more books you get, the more willing they may be to drop the price for you, especially if you come with cash. After all, cash is king. I wouldn't expect them to drop it for anything under $100, but if your total really starts racking up, I think it's safe to say that a cash offer might go a long way. Next up, you should call before bringing in books to sell or trade. Sometimes comic book shops get exceedingly busy, especially if it's a Saturday or a Sunday. It's good practice to let a shop manager know beforehand that you might be bringing in some books either for store credit or for cash. Ironically, at my antique shop, I encourage walk-ins, but that's kind of just because we're never busy. So come in anytime. Speaking of time, you should always arrive on time, whether it be at a comic book shop or a certain trade or deal that you've aligned up. Arriving on time shows that you're serious and often leads to signs of integrity. I also recommend as a bonus to pick a location that you both agree on that is safe and somewhere in between the middle point. Next up, you should always be patient. As a buyer, sometimes you may be all onto a lead that was days, weeks, and even months in the works. Try to be patient and understanding that the party on the other end needs time to really decide if they want to get rid of those books. Sometimes it does take some serious consideration on both ends. Next up is don't pay in Bitcoin or any funny other sort of currency. I've actually seen this happen. Any sort of cryptocurrency in Bitcoin, frankly, I just don't understand because I'm basically 90 years old. Stick with debit, credit, and cash. Most places these days don't even accept checks. Next up, it's important to not dress up as a werewolf. This can be unsettling to other shoppers and can frankly just be confusing. I know it's a very inclusive community that we are a part of, but it is important to be able to read the room, time and a place. It's also important to remember that comic shops are not appropriate places to claim sanctuary. Perhaps you are on the run for horse theft, stealing crops, or fraternizing with the town wenches. A comic shop is not an okay place to claim sanctuary. The rules simply just don't apply as they would to an ancient medieval cathedral. There's nothing worse than a shop owner that has to stop what they're doing in order to invoke protection due to an ancient law to save you from an angry mob. And finally, let's remember that it's important to give a kiss goodbye. Some clerks, managers, and shop owners sink 50, 60, and sometimes even 100 hour weeks into their craft. Show them you appreciate their hard work. This can best be done with a big wet smooch. This is a very giving community both ways, so show them that you care. Stay tuned to tomorrow's video where I will give you another 20 tips for comic etiquette from the perspective of sellers. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment down below on your way out, good sirs, and I will see you at the next video. Make sure to come down to Sentiment Depot Antiques and Collectibles where I'm set up with all of my comics located at 238 West Delaware Ave, Pennington, New Jersey. Open every day except for Monday and Tuesday. Enjoy 10% off from Wednesday to Friday. See you there.